What's up everyone? Today we are going to be painting Rolf from Zombicide's Green Horde. With Rolf we're not going to be doing anything too special. This is my first painting video or at least my first time trying to record while painting and so I just wanted to focus on getting it right. There's going to be some blurriness in the video and things like that but uh, I tried my best and unfortunately I only have one sculpt of him so um, we have to live with what it turned out, but I learned a lot from this video and going forward you're going to see a lot of better videos So I probably will be posting this one second just so you see there's uh, there's been some Some progress made but either way let's get down to the table and I'll show you how I did it All right, so I started with a Xenophil highlight I base coated him in black and then did a a spray of white primer from the top down. I'm just showing you here I am using a zero and a two brush for the most part. Um, starting with Vallejo's Nocturna Fantasy Pro Base Flesh and Model Color Flat Flesh. And I apologize again, I said in the intro that this is pretty much the first video that I recorded and so the camera goes in and out of focus a lot as it tries to focus on some of those things in the back. You can see it automatically jumps to focus back there and then I have to fight with it to get back into focus here. But this will be the only video that that happens. After that I figured out how to get something in the background to make it better. So I mix those two colors together just to get a little bit tanner flesh tone. I didn't want him to be so pale. His picture in the... Uh, in the artwork that comes with the game shows him as being a little bit darker So I started with a, a bit of a tanner version. It is going to take multiple layers To get a good coverage even with it being mostly a white Undercoat you can see there I jumped and it is a second coat here and the second coat you can still see a little bit of black uh, From the undercoat I probably would do a third coat overall I use the Umbral Umber, which is a dark chocolatey brown from P3 to do the hair. I also have the camera in a very weird position so you can see how daintily I'm putting the paint on the miniature. That's because I can barely see the miniature as I'm trying to film it. This is the fun things of learning how to film things, uh, film painting for the first time. I am pretty used to... Uh, you know, speaking and and recording with doing a whole bunch of video game videos, but I had never done painting videos before, so this is all something pretty new. Uh, Vallejo Model Color Flat Brown is next. I use a flat brown for all of his wraps. So it's going to go around his wrists and I believe around his legs, around his boots there. But please let me know, um, obviously in this video, the, the quality of... It is subpar to even the, ver the the last video that I posted, which was the Mansions of Madness Cultists. Um, even though this miniature is much higher quality, and I think my paint job is much better on this one than on the other one, the video quality is probably much worse. But let me know, uh, like the sound quality and things like that, if you if you're liking that and if it's working out for you. Anything that I can change. Um, I do have kind of a backlog of videos, but they're, it's not too big of a backlog, and I can always just re recalibrate the sound um, and upload the next one with better sound if you think that something's not going well. I'm interested to hear. So I have done his boots and his wraps in the flat brown. That is two coats. And then here is some raw sienna. I use the Deco Art Media. It's a very cheap brand of paint. Um, and I mixed a little bit of the flat brown in there. So I wanted to show you the, the, the color that I was working with. So it's not just the pure raw sienna. That's like a really light tan color. But basically what I did is I, I darkened the tan. I didn't lighten the brown. So I started with the tan. Um, the the raw sienna and I added a little bit of brown to that and this is going to be the the skirt that he's wearing that is underneath um, it kind of like a, a 
a cloth wrap that goes over top of it. So in the back you can see a large portion of that cloth wrap. In the front you can barely see any of it at all because it's covered by his weapon, his weapon shards and everything. So now I'm using a uh, Vallejo model color flat red, which is just a basic red color to go in and that's going to cover that that cloth that I was just talking about and there is the first example of losing focus so that happens pretty often it you know to me as the person who created the video if it happens once that's too many times you're probably thinking that's not a big deal you went right back into focus it's not a big deal but to me I I hate it because now I know so much more and it's so much easier it was also that while trying to paint this, I had to continuously move it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to get it into focus. And then I just cut those pieces out. So you can see a couple layers of that red on there uh, really makes it pop. So I'm using the Umbral Umber with flat brown mixed in. I'm showing you here the color that I ended up with. Obviously, that's not the best idea considering you're just going to see it on the model. But you know what? You live and you learn. So I'm doing this as the leather. So I didn't want it to be as dark as his hair. I didn't want it to be as light as the wraps. I wanted it something in between. So I did like a 50-50. That way we could have three different colors of brown. Uh, four if you're including the tan brown that's on his legs. But I really wanted to get multiple colors of brown. So all of the leather pieces that's including his uh, belt, the um, scabbards that I'm doing right there, which is the the um sword scabbard on the back the knife scabbard on the front he has a belt that the scabbards are held on to and then there is a wrap that goes around the uh, the hilt of his sword so all of those are all being done with that now i have out the citadel shade the nuln oil and the nuln oil we are going to use for his hair here it's going to really darken down that hair and even though we used a dark brown this is going to make it like a black brown um, and it's going to make the the hair really pop out so that you can see different uh the different strands rather than it just looking like one big clump of brown on top of his head then i'm taking a clean brush and dabbing out any of the places where the black has pooled which it pools heavily at the base of his hair and then it also tries to pool at his face, but of course you don't want it to go onto his skin. So now I'm using the Reichlin Flesh Shade. And also notice on his chest, his little pendant, I painted that red. So when I had the red out, I painted the pendant. I didn't show that in the video. So here we're using the Reichlin Flesh Shade, also from Citadel. And that's going to go on his skin to bring out all of his muscles. You have to put it on the front, back, and his legs. And then it comes out like this. You want to try to ma try to make sure that it doesn't pool anywhere either because it has kind of an orangish color and it'll make him really pop out orangey if you don't get that out of there. This is the Agrath Earthshade. Agrath. Agrax Earthshade. I have a real problem saying this one. Agrax Earthshade. And that is the dark brown wash from Citadel. So that is going to be on all of the leather. So we're going to do... I keep hitting the camera here because again, couldn't figure it out. So then now he's out of focus, but there you go. Uh, it's doing all of his clothing, his wraps on his arms, his boots. All of those are going to get done with um, the Agrax Earthshade. I guess if I over enunciate it, I can say it well. This one I think is probably the hardest model that I had to paint in terms of the amount of skin that shows on him gives you a huge chance to mess things up. I showed the colors that I was using there is the brown and uh, the new color that I added in there was buff by uh, Vallejo Model Color. And Vallejo Model Color's buff is like an orangish, or sorry, a yellowish brown. Um, and I'm using that to edge highlight all of the boots and the wraps. Um, to give them a nice little pop so you can see there that I'm just using that to uh, get all of the raised edges and the actual edges like the edges of the boot there like I was saying his skin is really tough to do um, I think skin is is pretty difficult in terms of technique uh, some other people might completely disagree I think that there's much harder techniques like doing non-metallic metals and 
and things like that. Maybe dry brushing is really difficult for you. I painted a couple things that uh, were to look like marble. That was not easy at all. This is the pure buff here. So the pure buff is what I use for any sort of strings. So this is a Vallejo model color buff. And using that to do any sort of string work. Um, I think that it gives it a, a real nice color of like rope and string. So I'm hitting the, the boots. I'm hitting the, the sword here. And you want it to be thinned down pretty well so that it doesn't um, gloop up into big clumps. Um, that's how you get those those little raised areas like those X's there otherwise uh, you run into a lot of trouble with the paint coming out way too thick and um, you lose all of the detail of these little X's and it just becomes a big blob of paint. I'm just going through and still adding that to all of the little stitches um, right here's a good example of it not being done properly so don't do this I go back in I fix it up a little bit because it's it just wasn't thin enough on the brush so even though I thinned down thinned down the paint I didn't wipe enough of it off of the brush and it came out a little clumpy you can see on the back here it I do it much better so now there's these very very thin little stitches on his pants so that's what you want to do but yeah I find I find paint uh, painting skin tones to be pretty difficult I then go back with the Vallejo's model color flat red and I'm hitting all of the raised portions just to take away that brown color and all of the flat portions too. Basically anything that I don't want to be um, darkened down by the, by the wash. So I'm hitting the raised portions and all of the flat portions and leaving the recessed portions, uh, they're, they're darkened red. So I'm not highlighting it up too much, I'm sort of just bringing it back to what it was before. And then we're also doing uh, very carefully the edges around the belt here, the uh, top portion of that. So you get a real nice uh, zoom in of my hand there, just in case you were wondering. Yes, I am human. I do have hands. Um, I'm using Mechanicus Standard Gray to paint in the metal plate that is right at his crotch here. That's right between the the uh, all the leather pieces. Um, it was kind of hard to notice why, even while I was painting it because it looked like I had already painted it due to the black primer then being sprayed over with a white primer. It actually looked like there was a color variant there. But I went back and did that piece as I did the metal pieces on this small knife that he's holding in his left hand and the metal pieces that are on his belt. So we got those. All done and then this is pure white I'm using pure white to paint in the bone handle the bone handle on uh, his little dagger on the left hand side because barely any of it showing um, it is it's already sort of dark in general because of the wash so doing the little bone white on there I think um, or sorry, doing the little white on there makes it actually look like bone and doesn't make it look too bright or, you know, like it's unpainted. It actually does look sort of, sort of like bone. And then I come in and edge a little bit of white on the, um, on the, on the dagger. If I could do it again, I probably wouldn't do this. It didn't give the effect that I thought it would. Um, I've done that on some of the bigger axes that I've painted, and that has come out well. Again, I'm using the white here to paint in the eyeballs. And there are a bunch of minions in the background. But yeah, so I paint in his eyeballs. I'm trying to see what I'm doing here. Hold on. Let's find out. Oh, just got some more paint. Do the other eyeball. Okay. So we're just going to paint both eyeballs in there with white. Uh, you want it thinned down as much as you can. Um, you want to put it in there very lightly. And then you're going to wait until the white is completely dry. Unlike what I did here. Which was I used the black a little bit too early. And it sort of bled into the white. And then the, the eyeball got too big. 
To fix that, the best thing that you can do is get a little bit of your skin color, go back over the cheeks again, and actually clean up the the um, surrounding area of the eyeballs. So I have Vallejo's model color silver and gold, and I'm painting the sword in silver because he's actually holding a special sword. It's not just the regular regular sword in the game. He has a special sword. I am learning how to do non-metallic metals. I don't know how to do them yet. Um, so I wasn't going to try it on here. So I just went for silver to make it looks like make it look like he has a really special sword. Everyone else is going to have sort of a gray sword. And then the hilt of the sword is getting painted in gold. So the protector plate above his hand and the the protector plate above his hand and the bottom of the the handle are both getting painted in gold. And then I painted the same pieces on that the one that he's holding and so here he is all painted up now we have to get working on the base and so for the base I'm using a texture paint so I don't use uh, the Vallejo texture paints for everything I have a couple different brands and I got one that was much cheaper um, I forget what the name of the the brand is but the whole point is is that some of these texture paints you can just go and get especially when they're going to get covered up you don't want to use like the best one or the nicest looking one you just want one that gives you a textured base to make it look like somebody is standing outside and so that's what I'm doing here you want to make sure you get it everywhere and then I took some rocks from outside they've all been washed and cleaned and I got one that looked appropriate sized and put it there right in right in front of him and that texture paste will hold it into place you don't actually have to glue it down and then I use some Beel Tan Green which is a green shade from Citadel and after the stuff completely dries it has to dry completely or else you're gonna run into problems of it getting trapped in your brush so you want it to dry all the way and then come back uh, the, the the paste I, I'm talking about if the tape the paste doesn't dry completely it'll get trapped in your brush and then you'll you'll have to keep wiping it away and then going back again and putting green there and then wiping it away so on and so forth in other words if you wait the extra 20 30 minutes for it to dry completely um, you're going to have a much easier time so here I've got some watered down PVA glue I just use some simple Elmer's glue and I add some water to it make it like a milky texture and color make it real thin and then I paste it um, I paint it on with a very cheap brush there then I put a little bit of the brown gravel from army painter they have this uh, gravel medium that I put on there first you don't have to do anything to it other than that just sprinkle it on and then you took the grass medium here and you do the exact same thing Kind of out of the shot here but all i'm doing is sprinkling it on and then once it's all covered up i'll tap him off and back over top of the pot here there you go see i tap him off and then what a good thing to do is press it down just a little bit you can press it down just a bit so i'm using the the army painter battlefield um grass tufts i really like these they're really easy to use so I just get a little bit of super glue. I use the Gorilla, Gorilla Glue brand because it dries clear. And I just go ahead and well, stick it to my hobby holder first. If you don't have a hobby holder, you should think about getting one. Um, I hit the camera there. So I'm really fighting with everything except for what I should be doing, which is sticking this onto him. There you go. All right, so I put that in there just to add a little bit of of coolness to it and here he is so you can see um, I should have went back and fixed his cheek there where his eyeball is that is probably the most important part I did um, I didn't show it but I did do a little bit of highlighting on his muscles I went back with the original color and put some highlighting all over his uh, back and chest and the top of his shoulders and here he is with the necromancer they're staring each other down I figure he needed somebody uh, about the same size as him to to square off against but thank you guys so much for watching I'm going to be doing all of the zombie side green horde uh, heroes 
and villains and zombies and um, I'm supposed to be getting the the horde box in just a couple days and then we'll be off to the races on that one so I can't wait to get these all painted up for you let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you all soon